60 to 70 percent of all of the chronic diseases that ail us as human beings could truly be cured or modulated with significant changes in our diet. And the question is, why? Why is something so seemingly simple going to have such a significant impact? And the reason for this, if you look at it very generally speaking, is inflammation. The question then is, well, how is food affecting the inflammation in my body? Well, inherently, we internalize 80 to 90 percent of the outside world through our mouths and literally we are what we eat so the quality of the food that we're putting into our bodies is then translated into the quality of our overall health we eat proteins that are broken down into amino acids we eat carbohydrates that are broken down into glucose and we eat fats they're broken down into glycerol. And obviously the quality of each of those things then determines how our DNA is expressed and the overall health of our individual cells and consequently our bodies. So if we're looking at inflammation as the primary driver, and obviously there's a lot of moving parts. It's complicated and complex in the human body. But if I had to pick one area to make a significant change that I think would move the needle significantly in o the overall inflammatory response in most of our bodies, it would be glucose control. And foregoing the digestive process for proteins and for fats right now, I'm gonna focus on carbohydrate metabolism. So what happens when you eat carbohydrates? Well. Once you ingest them, it's broken down into glucose. And either that glucose is utilized because you are gonna go out for a walk after you eat dinner and you're gonna keep your blood glucose nice and stable or you're gonna be active or whatever it may be, or you're eating so much that you're not utilizing all of the glucose and it consequently gets stored typically as fat. fat Visceral fat in particular, or abdominal fat, is a driver of inflammation in the body. And this is a direct risk factor for cardiovascular disease, cancer, autoimmune diseases, as we had already discussed. But what's actually going on is as the blood glucose levels overcome the system, because once you eat carbohydrates, you stimulate your pancreas to release enzymes that then break that down and then you consequently release insulin from the pancreas that drives the glucose into the cells for utilization. If you have lots of excess glucose over time, what happens is the cells become resistant to the insulin and that process then becomes much less effective and there becomes more glucose left in the bloodstream, more glucose then stored as fat, and consequently increased inflammatory response. The other thing that happens is that as this glucose builds up in the bloodstream, it attaches to the red blood cells. And what you can see is that this is the normal blood flow where you don't have glucose molecules attached to the hemoglobin, the oxygen-carrying cells, well, when there's excess glucose and it attaches to these blood cells, it makes them sludgy and causes them to flow really, really slowly, which can promote damage to the wall of the artery or even encourage clot formation that could potentially cause heart attack or stroke. All of this research and um, investigation that I do for the YouTube videos and all of the platforms I typically do in um, collaboration with my oldest son. And as we have been through a lot of these processes, um, he finally looked at me and he said, Dad, I think you should put on a continuous glucose monitor so that you can see, you know, how you're doing with your glucose management. And I said, Max, if you want me to do this so I can show you what a phenomenal job 
I do with my diet and with exercise and with recovery and all of these things. My sleep is clearly a problem. It's been a problem a long time for being on call for 25 years. But the things that I can really control, I do a really good job and fine. If you want me to measure my continuous blood glucose, I will do this because I think that this is a primary driver of inflammation in my body. I'm going to show you what a great job I've been doing. We reached out to Levels and ordered the system and I downloaded the app onto my phone. I placed the glucose monitor, began the process of utilizing Levels to help me track exactly how I was doing with my overall blood glucose, my meals, my activity, et cetera. The story didn't end exactly as I had planned. Within 48 hours, I realized that I had had multiple unacceptable glucose spikes. Very unacceptable. The really discouraging thing was that it was related to foods that I thought were really, really healthy. And in fact, for some people, they may very well be. I'm a firm believer that we all have our, instruction, our own instruction manuals, which is why I think that the insight for, from tracking your blood glucose can be so incredibly insightful. And, and what I very quickly realized is that you don't know until you know. The staggering statistic that 80% of individuals that are pre-diabetic have no clue that they actually are really hit home for me because I ended up in that group. So I continued to monitor and continue to have spikes. I reached out to my internist, who's a very good friend of mine, and I told him what was going on. Totally flipped out, um, very surprised. Just, you know, you work really hard on your diet, you stay really fit. You try to do all the things. Nonetheless, here, here I was. So consequently, he had me check a hemoglobin A1C, which as I showed you just a moment ago with the model, that the glucose actually attaches to the hemoglobin molecules, slows them down. Well, what you can measure is the percentage of glucose that is actually affected by this increased glucose, which then gives you a 90 to 120 day window, because that's how long red blood cells live, as to how you've been doing with your glucose management. 5.7 is the cutoff, 5.7% is the cutoff for normal versus pre-diabetic. I was 5.9, clearly. I had some work to do. So at this point, I realized that the impact of knowing the data is, is crucial. So I reached out to Levels and asked to partner with them, and they're actually the sponsor of this video today, and I'm very fortunate to be working with them. You know, I have had this opportunity to have my eyes opened, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to think about continuous glucose monitoring and utilizing levels to help you track how you're doing. So a lot of the questions I get about continuous glucose monitoring is, is it painful? What does it feel like what, once it's in and what have you? So I thought I would just show you a little alcohol swab and There is a small needle for insertion, but that needle doesn't stay in. So a small press, couldn't even feel it. And the CGM is placed. Put a nice cover on it to keep it clean and dry. Give it a little protection. No needle. The needle is left inside the device. At which point, it then connects to our phone. And the cool thing is, you don't have to use the CGM to get advantages from the Levels app, because you can utilize it to actually track 
your macronutrients, your total calories, and have estimates of your blood sugar um, spikes. You can just simply take a picture of your meal and the AI technology will estimate the overall calories, protein, carbohydrates, fats, etc. In addition, it'll also track your activity levels um, as well as your recovery um, and sleep. So it gives you kind of the whole package to help track how you're doing from an entire health standpoint, which is really, really useful because it keeps you accountable. And you know that which is not tracked cannot be fixed. And so I think it gives you a, a phenomenal platform to be able to do that. If you're interested in giving it a try, please click the link below, check out Levels, see if it's right for you. It's certainly made a huge impact in my life. See what you think. I believe that continuous glucose monitoring is going to be as popular as the wearables that I utilize and I'm sure you are familiar with as well. Measuring you know, resting heart rate, HRV, methods to, to evaluate your sleep. And I think that, that measuring and following your glucose and your glucose spikes and your overall glucose control is equally as important when it comes to modulating inflammation and chronic disease and improving health span and lengthening lifespan. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's an investment. But what better to invest in than your own health? I hope you guys have a great night.